The Still Standing Comedy Tour is coming to a city near you. Tacoma, Washington, May 10th and 11th. London, London, UK, baby. I am coming one night only with B. Simone. The Still Standing Comedy Tour is May 18th. London, get your tickets now. Do I have a lot of London fans? Are y'all listening to me over there in London? Let me know in the comments. Comments and let me know if y'all are in London. Louisville, Kentucky. Did I say that right? Louisville, Louisville. It got an S, but some people say Louis. Some people say Louis, but I'm coming. May 24th, 26th, Ontario, California, June 7th and 9th. Dallas, Texas, that is my home hometown. June 13th, I will be at the Majestic Theater. We are going to sell that baby out. I'm going to have some surprise guests, so get ready for that. That's going to be a really big show on this tour. Chicago, Illinois, July 12th through the 14th at the Improv. Washington, D.C., July 26th, 28th at the Improv. All of these cities, if you heard your city, you're in a surrounding city, make sure you pull up to the Still Standing Comedy Tour. Tickets are available at officialbsimone.com. Y'all, let's get into the show. What's up, you guys? I'm your host, B. Simone, and welcome to the Let's Try This Again podcast. Let's try this again. Waffle House in a minute, y'all. They got blueberries. 
<laughs> Looking pretty. They got a little bit. So, I'm gonna get some waffles. I can get hash browns, waffles, and oh, grits. I don't eat eggs. Sister. Hey, what do you have to say to LTTA? Be blessed, guys. <laughs> Sleepy. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so, we're about to eat here. I'm going to show y'all what I'm going to get. I have not had Waffle House in probably years, but I'm not even going to act like I eat healthy all the time because I had junk the other day. I had sour candy, chips, junk out of a vending machine. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Brandon, what you want to say to LTTA? Oh, LTTA, man, we, right now we're at Walmart. <laughs> man, we're get a, um, Give them the word of the day, motivation. Word of the day. On time. How many we going to have at the high bar? Because I was late. Time management. Time management. Is okay, the that's good. You know what I'm saying? I'm very punctual. Unfortunately, it was out of Not my hands. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, Mother. what do you want to say to LTTA family? Listen, oh, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> that last episode. <laughs> what was that, four? Episode Three? four, yeah, four. That was four. Mm -hmm. Last episode four got me all the way together. Uh, she, y'all, she called me. She was like, I was getting my eyelashes done. And my, her eyelash ladies had to say, whatever you listen to, stop. You finna cry. Cut it off. You keep me. Why are you watering? She's like, are your eyes burning? I'm like, no. Oh, thank you for listening. Yeah. No, and so just keep trying. <laughs> keep going. What's the word of the day? Brandon said time management because he was late. Mm. <laughs> nah, it's something about doing something. Wowing yourself. That's not a word. I like that. I'm about to wow myself. Do something to wow yourself today. Yeah, do something to wow yourself. Something that you ain't did for the first time or you've been thinking about doing, you want to do. I wanted to do stand up since I was probably like seven. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I, my favorite show growing up was I Love Lucy and Comedy You. And you're doing it today. And I always was like, I ain't no comedian. I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. I was just think about it. Now I'm gonna do it. <laughs> That's crazy. It's like jumping out of an airplane. It is. But it feels good to be doing something for the first time. That's what I'm saying. So do something for the first time to wow yourself today. Even if you're scared, do it scared. Do it scared. Do it scared. Yeah, do it scared. What's your word of the day for LTTA? My word of the day. Or your word of the day, like not like word, word, like a word. Oh, okay. Because I was looking at this. Like, <laughs> one word. How can I condense all of this? Into, uh, <laughs> so one word. Keep growing. Keep growing. Keep growing. You know what I mean? You keep growing. You keep growing. Similar to, to what Bree said. Like, like never get comfortable. Never get comfortable. Yeah. Always find ways to grow. Stretch yourself. Stretch your your, your environment. Stretch your circle. Club look before anybody get in. What you listening to? We here, Raleigh, North Carolina. About to be showtime. Got the LTTA merch on, y'all. I really gotta get y'all some merch. Y'all have been asking. It's coming. I promise. Hey, this again look like nigga. In the mirror, Jesus. Morning, child of God. Good morning, child of God. Oh, good morning. <laughs> good morning, child of the most high. How are you? How are you? I feel amazing. My voice is gone. Your voice is a little cranky. It's a little cranky. <laughs> Breezy. Step up. What's that? You're a stand-up comic. I'm a stand-up comic, y'all. What stage. did you do this morning when you woke up? I woke up, I was like, yeah, you can tell me that. <laughs> What's up? I do comedy, bro. <laughs> I did this shit. 15, 16 years of my life, I've been wanting to do this. And you did it. Try it. She was scared and she did it. I did it. 
What's up? Good job. Riley, we got two shows tonight. <laughs> two shows tonight. Oh my God. I feel great, but my voice is gone. That is so weird. I was fine this morning. Be quiet. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Yes, that don't even sound good. Hello? Hello? Hey, I'm What's that? What, what kind of is that? Is that coffee or tea? Yeah. We're at Target. Mm -hmm. And then... Where are we going after Target? You want to go to a juice bar? To a juice to get a smoothie? Oh, Smoothies on. Oh, an acai. Acai? I miss my sister, man. I could, I'm about to get off of here. My voice is ridiculous. Come talk to LTTA, Brendan. What's up, LTTA? What's going on, LTTA? You know what I'm saying? We in here right now in Target. Uh, What's your favorite thing about me? Favorite thing about B. Simone is her energy is top tier. That's the first and foremost. You always recognize energy before anything else. Energy is great. Uh, Keep going. Yeah. Keep my, going. My, <laughs> keep going. going. <laughs> my love language is words of affirmation. Let me hear it. Oh, yeah. Her, her love language is words of affirmation. She's going to let you know, but she's not going to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing she's going to do. Love my love language is, uh, it is words of affirmation, acts of service. Oh, you like people to do shit for you. No, nah, but like. Help around the house. Yeah. Um, let me affirm you since your love language is words of affirmation. You are. A blessing in my life. <laughs> no, bro, you are a blessing. This smells a blessing in my life. <laughs> She's so cute. You're a blessing. Thank you. You feel me? Thank you for forcing me yeah. to like overcome fears and chase my dreams. You did it. We're like, no, just do it. Push. Just do it. Push me. I was like, we're going to Rally Friday. You're riding with us, and you're getting on stage. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. And it wasn't bad. So. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're you welcome. need friends like that in your life, bro. She did so good, y'all. Push, Push you off them I cliffs. Push you off them cliffs. Maybe I show you. I was a little. Was a little. Let's put it out there. Let's, <laughs> let's somebody be honest. I'm a little worried. I'm worried too. I'm worried too. Because yeah. he, he the host, so if somebody bomb, he got to go gotta back up there up. after them right. and be like, all right, guys, let's you bring see, the interview. Right. That's why we was in the van on the way up here. I was like, so have you ever just did stand up? He was like, yeah. I was like, so let's switch. I'll host it. I'll host it. You do stand up. He's, He's like, like, no. no. <laughs> all right. It's a little risky. A little risky. Well, got you got what you need? All right, we out. Ooh, we. This voice. to a salad bar. We need some food. We need something to eat. Chew on. Chew on. I need to chew. <laughs> salad. We need some chips too. I know. It's a lot. Okay. I <laughs> stopped recording in Raleigh. Baby, we got on that road back home and we was knocked out. We got back probably at 7 a.m. and I have been in the bed since and it is 3.44 on Cinco de Mayo. Lord! Hoo wee I did a treatment on my hair. I got a face mask on. I can barely move my mouth. It is so tight. But, hello. Good morning. How are you? Thank you for being here. If you are watching this, thank you for being here. Share this podcast with somebody. Spread the word about LTTA. I got some surprises coming up, and I actually think I'm going to start announcing it on next week's episode. Actually, today, this week, we were going to post our first male guest, but I got to save him for Patreon. Who y'all think it is? Who y'all think the first male guest is? 
I gotta save him for Patreon. I'm gonna start a Patreon soon. I don't know when. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna plan it out. I'm gonna see what that's gonna look like. And yeah, Kimmy's episode is coming up next right now. Enjoy it. Get popcorn, get wine, get your water, get whatever. I could barely talk. I could barely talk. I could barely talk. <laughs> Oh my God, I love you guys. Let's get it. Sis! Hi! I love you. First of all, I have been trying to get you on the phone for two, how many days? Three days. Nigga! <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I cannot wait for you to be in Atlanta tomorrow to shoot. Let me show you where we're shooting. This is the house. Ooh. It's so nice. I cannot wait for you to get on this couch and vibe with me. I love you. And I just can't wait for you I'm to get excited. here. I'm excited. Are you? <laughs> what are we going to talk about? You all. You've been doing this a lot longer than I have. <laughs> he said, whatever you want to talk about, I love you, I love you, I love you. Today is pie day, you guys. I am super excited. I have Kimmy. Oh my gosh. She is so phenomenal on social media, but I feel like I don't really know her outside of cooking and this bubbly personality. And I ain't bad. But um, I'm like, who is this woman behind these meals? And today we are gonna dig a little deeper, hear her story and really let her express to us, you know, who she is and where she comes from. And I'm just super, super, super excited. I've met her before once, actually not once, two or three times at a comedy show. All times were at my comedy show. She always buying tickets. I'm like, Kimmy, just DM me and ask me for tickets. But she always just buys tickets, shows up, surprises me. And um, it's always a pleasant surprise to see her. So I know her through social media and coming to my comedy shows. But outside of that, I don't know her on a more personal level. So I'm excited to do this interview and get to know her on a more personal level. Y'all, there is bugs. And I keep looking around because they're dragonflies. Can you see that? I, it's moving so fast. I don't know where it went. Ah! It's right there. Where'd it go? There are, I don't know. There are big dragonflies and they're scaring me. So yeah, get ready. She's about to pull up and yeah, let's go. Kimmy, we just shot your episode. We did. How do so you feel? Fun. I feel relieved. Do you? <laughs> I do. Aww. I talked to a bestie all day. I love you. I love you too. Oh, you were great. Thank you. you. Where are you going? About to go. Home. Ah. Flight book. About to go to Virginia. Right to the airport. Yep. Oh, you guys, our episode was so good. It she was. shares so much in this episode about her life like I am so excited to share it with you guys so you guys can see a different version of her because she was saying stuff I didn't even know Hello. show me your gift bag it's cute yeah. look and it. come on Balenci you see me you got money I'll be like yes yeah. <laughs> I know where I was coming to oh, uh -huh. stop I love you sis love you thank you for being here All right, you already know it's your girl, B. Simone, and welcome back to another episode of the Let's Try This Again podcast. I have a guest with me today, today. Can you sing? No. I sang with Crystal Renee. I know, but no. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't for to give me slip. Like, I saw the episode. No. <laughs> Just try. Today, today. Oh! No, see, I didn't look at her. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> nope. That's it. That's it. Um, I got my girl Kimmy. What's hey, up? Hi. When did we meet? Oh, uh, we met officially in November of last year. I think I went to you came to one of my shows in Virginia. Yep. So y'all, I have been following her on social media for probably years now, at least a couple years, at least two. Um, and she is just the sexiest, funniest, <laughs> flyest, wittiest. She has so much personality, chef, on the gram, y'all. She just be cooking and I ain't back. I just be like, Ooh. I just be waiting for that moment. Look, everybody do. You be having me in my bed 
looking at this food when Hunger. I'm supposed to be on a diet or a fast. <laughs> what is going on? My bad. What is going on? I like to eat, so I know. If I gotta eat, y'all gonna see it. <laughs> so y'all gotta check her out if you don't already know who she is. But I not only wanted to bring you on the show because number one, you support me so much. You pulled up to I think two or three of my shows and I just see you in the meet and greet line. I'm like, what? Why are you buying tickets? Just DM me. You don't nope. ask for no tickets. You nope. just buy your tickets and show up. Not only do you support me, not only have I followed you for so long, and I just love your page. I love your personality. I love your aesthetic. You don't do no interviews. I don't. You haven't <laughs> been on a... I'm like, who is this girl? As much as I feel like I know you on social media, it's all food. It's all cooking. I'm like, I don't really know her. <laughs> I be seeing little kids in the video sometimes. I'm like, is that her nephew? Are those her kids? Is that her baby daddy? Is that her husband? Is that... I don't know nothing. So I'm like, let's just get on here and talk. Tell your story. And I wanted to bring you on. Let's try this again <laughs> as an outlet to just tell your story and tell your followers in the world who you are, um, who you are, excuse me. But I am going to start off with your fans had some questions for you. <laughs> they got some questions, questions girl. Yeah. We're going to start off with these little quick little rapid fire. <laughs> Ask these questions because we asked her supporters, what do y'all want to know? And baby, when I say they went in, in. They went in. Not um somebody saying, what I want to know is how you cook so damn good. <laughs> <laughs> a big batch. You know, we just get that what we do. If you love food, it's going to come out good. If it's you gonna love come to out. cook, it honestly comes out delicious. See, that's I'm how sorry. you keep a man. And you got three baby daddies. And we don't get to that. Oop. Because I thought you were, I thought you was married and I thought all your kids had the same dad. And nope. I was way off. Just assuming. You see how people assume? You you got three. We're going to talk about that. I want to hear that story, girl. Okay. Um, not, Are you a nice person? I'm very, I'm too nice. She's, I'm too nice. Okay, let's talk about that. I'm, I have to get told a lot. I'm either really extremely nice, very generous person, or I'm mean, cut you off. I'll, I'll cut you off. People What's off your sign? Scorpio. Okay, I don't know nothing about that. I'm a Christian. I just had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I still be asking every now yeah. and then. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm really nice. I grew up, you know, having a hard life. So I, I made sure that I'm the kind of person I wish I had. When I was a kid. Man. So I'd make sure. I did have a few people like that. So that's why I kind of like mimic after them. Like I have people that fed me when I was hungry. Okay. And so I'm the same way. I'm going to feed okay. you when you're hungry. If you're okay. in my house, you're going to eat. Okay. I don't care if you, you're a kid, you're a grown up. You're in my house, you're going to eat. All my all my son's uh, friends, I take care of them like my own kids. Wow. If you go to the mall and I give him $200, he, his friend gets $200 Getting too. Getting $200 yeah. too. That's when you nice said you idea. had a hard life, what, what made it hard? Was it your environment? Was it your upbringing? Was your household? It was. It was everything. I'm. I'm a black girl from the Bronx, so wow. that automatically. Okay. Uh, I grew up with my aunt and my uncle. Okay. My mom left when I was six months. I didn't meet her till I was 19 years old. Married with a kid. I met my mother for the first time. Literally. How did that interaction go? Was it? It was. Uh, it was through Facebook at first. Wow. I, she. I had found her. Her name for my uh, birth certificate. I sent her a message. You know, it was new Facebook back then. Okay. Sent her a message and she responded and my brother responded. So I, she like, knew who you were growing she, up. She knew. She had a kid. She left me at six months with my dad and his wife. Wow. Like, All right, well, I didn't see her for 19 years. My dad claimed she was around, but I didn't. I didn't see her. Did you ever ask her in that in that interaction with her, or still to this day, why? I didn't. Because by the time I met her, if I was like 14, 15, I think I would have. When I met her, I was in the military, married with a, uh, I think a one month old. Okay. I, by the time I was a mother. So now I'm like, I don't even want to why didn't matter to you. Why? Because I would never leave him. Wow. So I was like, it's too, it's not, not too late. I still talk to her here and there. Okay. But we never had that mom and daughter relationship ever. So even though you didn't ask why, she never opened up and tried to give you her side. Nope. Never. Never. She, she just did. acted like it never happened. Nothing. She was like, oh, I'm, yeah, I was smoking and drinking while I was pregnant with you. I'm just sitting there like, oh, okay. Jesus. And just, and, just, and it was just, I guess it was normal back then. Like, then my aunt, she raised me. And I say raised loosely. I mean, actually, they might get mad when they see this, but mm -hmm. honestly, mm -hmm. it's raised loosely. I didn't. Going days hungry, you know, never having no new clothes, no new shoes. Always, I was always a broke kid. So that's why I'm. That's why I'm so nice because I was always that broke kid. My friends had to pay for my meals when we go out. Can't go anywhere. You're trying to be the person you never had. Yep. And you said they might get mad when they see this. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you for telling your truth on the mic because I'm still battling with that. Mm -hmm. Because my truth. There's other people involved. That it will hurt. Yeah. That it will hurt. But mm -hmm. it's like, I want to tell my story. I should be able to tell it without 
the other person getting upset. I'm not. I'm telling my side. You want to tell your side? My experience. Tell your side. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my, I know my my mom, my real mother. I say real mother because I I have a woman that I used to call my mom. She passed away a few years ago. I she was like a mom to me. Okay. She raised me from my 18 to like 32 years old. Okay. So to me, she was like a mom to me. She, I, we was real close. So she passed away a few years ago. But so I say my birth mom because I didn't. I wasn't raised by her to call her my mom, but. Whenever I would post saying things like, oh, I take care of my boys so well because I didn't have a mom growing up. Man, she, she gets get upset. Offended. Yeah, she gets is, upset. Is, I'm like, I'm I'm not saying anything about you. It's, I'm it's telling my, my truth. truth. It it's is. my story. It's, I, I didn't, didn't have a mom have growing up. So, yeah, they they get upset. And I, I understand, like, you know, I'm not calling them out. You know, saying that it's just something that's part of my story. Yeah. It is. No one really hears about it because I'm always um, afraid of, 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 Making them upset and offending them. That's and, how I am. And once they mess with me, I'm, I'm, I'm ignored. That's how I am. I'm ignored. So I'm real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the mute. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I would have never known this. Oh yeah, like you see the girl know. behind this food. <laughs> I'm happy behind the food. I'm smiling. I'm extroverted. Really extroverted. In my I'm really introverted in real life. Yeah. I could be in the house I all tell weekend. You, you shy a little bit. No yeah. sun, and I'll be perfectly fine. Wow. I would not care to be okay. outside every every single day. Okay. Um, but I'm extroverted. In a work environment. Okay. Even when I was in the military, I was real out, outgoing. They like, oh my God, you're so fun. So they get home. Don't text me. Don't call me. No, <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> Give me a minute. Now, what made you go to the military? Was it for, for a life of structure? Was it for money? Was it for opportunity? Was it what? Structure, m food. Oh, we. Literally. And, uh, I won't say money. I didn't think, I didn't think of the money aspect. Honestly. Okay. Okay. So my boyfriend now, I met him 15 years ago, and he's the reason I joined the military. What? He was 17, 18, you know, a little messing around. Right. <laughs> hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, you daddy. And he kind of like. Your baby's daddy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it took me 15 years, like him down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was, he kind of like, what, what are you doing? Okay. Like, you just on the internet, on YouTube all day, and just, you know, on AIM, because back then we had AIM, AIM. and my AOL. Space. Yeah, we was. He's like, he's, I was like, I don't know. He was like, I'm joining the military. Like, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in, about to go to the Navy in December, and like, I'm like, yeah, he showed me his separate paperwork and it shows all the benefits. And one of them said, one of the benefits said three hundred dollars towards towards food. Jesus. That part I was like, you know what? I'm tired of wondering my next meal. How I'm gonna eat. And so you were hungry. financially struggling during oh, this yeah. time. I was on welfare and food stamps my entire childhood. Now I was on food stamps, but I finessed it. I really was out in Atlanta struggling and I missed them food stamps. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I had them food stamps. I, I had food stamps and unemployment. That's a fun fact about B. Simone. I was that unemployment. When? <laughs> so hold on, now. I'm the bar. Was it 2023? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong. No, I, mean, I, I had was on food stamps when they had the, the, the booklet. Wow. The little, and we would buy, like, in New York, you could buy candy for, like, five cents. Yeah. My sister would give me, like, a little, like, a five dollar booklet yeah. thing, and I'd take it and buy a five cent candy so I could get four dollars back. Wow. Just so I could have that. Just so you could have that. Yeah, just to get something I else. I did it when I first moved to Atlanta, so it had to be at least seven, seven, eight years ago. Okay, when okay. When I first was out here struggling and, you know. And it's uh, not wrong with it. What I, People need it. Baby, what? People I, need I it. I needed it. Yeah. I was like, I do not see how people are living off of these little ass checks. I could not, I was like, why am I choosing between food and toilet paper? Literally. Like, yeah. That is sad. That was yeah. the beginning of my, my journey when I first moved out here on my own. And baby, that unemployment check though, when you get that check and it's like, I ain't working. Oh, how do I get that now? <laughs> yeah, cut you out. The minute you put it on there, what's your name? Bring it on now. Put it in the shredder. Be put it in the, in the unemployment line. Don't put it in the shredder. mind your business. <laughs> No. Wow. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Your personality is so vibrant and the success you see on the internet, you really, really, excuse me, never know who's behind that. You don't. And it's, it's, it's hard because once you put it out there, that's it. And people will start judging it for what they want to judge it for. And I read so many comments on other people's pages and posts and I'm just <laughs> like, y'all really sit up here and y'all projecting. And in my mind, you're only projecting. You're projecting. No one that's really happy with their life yeah. would get on, on the internet and be so negative yeah. in the comments to people they do not know. And especially, you, you're, you're making up a whole scenario, a whole story, your own assumption, and just running with it. You got it. one little fact that you think you know the whole thing. And you're just wrong. People, I've seen people say, well, yeah, B. Simone, da, 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 not I think or I feel. No. Nope. She, da, 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 da. I'm like, when did I do that? <laughs> when did, when did, <laughs> when I did that happen? People when say did I got I diabetes, high blood pressure. Uh, all this stuff because of the way I cook. I'm like, 
I got a clean health bill. My God. I don't. I, and when I was pregnant, oh, I know she got pre preeclampsia. Why would you even put that out into the world? What is that? It's like so. It's like a high blood pressure for a pregnant woman that could harm harm you and the baby. I'm like, Just I, talking. I literally had healthy pregnancies. Every pregnancy, all four, four healthy boys, four healthy boys. Wow. I had six pregnancies, four babies. Now, what is your relationship with food? I want to ask you that because you being a chef, you being you, you know, you make your jokes, big back, whatever. Stop <laughs> saying that. I know, I know. I, it's kind of getting on my nerves too, honestly. I I don't know who made it up, but it, it is kind of getting. It's annoying. like no, it is. You fine as hell. <laughs> no, it ain't medium. It is. It's medium. <laughs> it's medium. Okay, smart, smart. <laughs> <laughs> but but I have I had a. And I still struggle with this, an unhealthy relationship with food. My weight is so up and down. I, I lost 45 pounds maybe almost a year and a half ago. And I'm so transparent. I was on Ozempic. Really? I got diagnosed with PCOS. So um, I didn't go in because I thought I went in to lose weight. Mm -hmm. But she yep. was like, you know what? You have PCOS. We're going to put you on insulin. It's going to help you lose the weight. I said, okay, cool. Super unhealthy, you guys. I am not promoting mm -hmm. um, this, 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 but I'm very transparent. I'm very honest. I was on Ozempic for a year. It messed up my gut health. It messed up my digestive tract. It messed up a lot. But I lost 45 pounds. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. collarbone, I can't, my, when I'm on the toilet now, my, I'm, my stomach is hurting and I'm shitty booty, but I'm skinny. Which is skinny. So it's like shitty booty or skinny. I might have to just <laughs> pick one or be big, baby. I, I was taking them Ozempic shots, and um, yeah, I, I don't recommend it for health. But I did that because why? Not only do I have PCOS, even when I eat super healthy and super clean, it's hard for me to stay lean and in shape. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Um, I had an unhealthy relationship with food that I'm still working through. Overeating. You were full five bites ago, and you're still eating. What, why are you still, your, your stomach hurts. You're literally yep. eating your food to nauseam, nausea, and you're like, okay, you think that's just, that's still an addiction. It that's is. still unhealthy. It that is, is still, gluttonous. I don't care what your body, gluttony, you know? So that, that's what, what I go through with food. What I literally have to be intentional when I eat. Are you full? Are you satisfied? These are questions that I ask myself as I'm eating. Okay. Now this can be another meal. You're, you're full. You're mm -hmm. not hungry no more, so stop eating. What is your relationship with food? Do you feel like you have a healthy relationship with food? Do you feel like you eat when you're stressed? Do you feel like, no, I'm, I am I just like to cook. Do you feel like, what do you feel like your relationship when with I'm, food when is? When I'm stressed, baby, I might lose a few pounds. Okay. okay. Don't, you let me, don't let me be hurt. Okay. Don't let me be hurt. Don't let me get cheated on. My man, uh, now it's perfect. Don't uh, get cheating on me, y'all. But yes. my last one, two days, I ain't eating because yeah. I'm hurt. But I get full extremely quick. Okay. I do. I do get okay. full extremely quick. I, but I do snack a lot. That's, okay. that's my thing. I snack a lot. And right now I'm breastfeeding, so I snack a lot. Okay. This is part of your body's giving so much energy right now. Okay. I've been pregnant. My body hasn't been mine for the last year. Okay. I was pregnant for nine months and now my baby's two months old. So for the last year, my body has not been mine by wow. itself. But before that, people were like, oh, who eat all that food? I make the big plate for a presentation. For a presentation. That's it. That's no it. one's sitting. Not my 13 year might eat all that. <laughs> but I'm not sitting here yeah. eating this big old plate. My yeah. plate looks crazy. It's yeah. little. It's this big. It's just. And I sometimes forget to eat. I don't eat breakfast. I don't like breakfast. Yeah. I'm not really a big fan yeah. of that. Coffee and a muffin. Yeah. I'm good till like, 12, till 11 o'clock. You have a relationship with food to me. Yeah, and it's fine. It's like, of course, I've gained weight over. I used to be real, real scrawny when I was a kid. Really? Of course, okay. once I started, you know, having money to buy my own food, I'm You're over like, what buying. Time to eat? Yeah, I'm buying whatever I want yeah. to. And I don't believe, people believe that cooking, the way I cook, will make people, it's not how much, it's not what you cook with all the time. It's how much you eat it. Yes. You can overeat a salad. You can yes. overeat yes. baked chicken yes. and grilled chicken. You can yes. overeat protein. You can yes. overeat all that stuff. Yes. It doesn't It doesn't matter. It just, it's just how you go about it. And yes. I'm not fit. I don't work out. I yes. need to. I'm going to yes. hire me a trainer, postpartum trainer. Yes. You out there. What's up? Yes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Just, I'm just ready. Come back together. Yeah. But I, even before, when I was skinny, I was... I wasn't fit. I was skinny, but I wasn't fit. And that doesn't mean you um healthy. Out either. of breath. Two Just because you're small. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Out of breath, two steps. So I, I want to have the full balance. I, love I want to be able that. to eat what I want to eat. Yeah. Still. Yes. And then I still want to be able to work out and, you know, play with my boys without getting tired. Yeah. Because my boys, they on Sonic Hedgehog energy. Yeah. They <laughs> squirrels. Four boys. <laughs> and look, and speaking of four boys, another question from your fans was, are you going to try again for a girl? Because we saw on Instagram, make that picture pop up. <laughs> Ding! If you're on YouTube, you can see the picture. Zoom in. When she pulled that thing and it was blue and it was a boy, she was like, the caption said, my sister could have told me. 
You could have just put this in the group chat. We didn't have to have no gender reveal. We, we didn't. I put money on the gender reveal. <laughs> I wanted to see pink. I had a pink dress on. I was true. Uh, I was ready. I was, I, I, my man had a little pink like champagne bottle. We was ready. You thought it was a girl for I real. I thought it was a girl this time because I, it was. It was this time it was so different. And they say the the gender of the baby is determined by the male, right? It is. And you're mm -hmm. like, and this was a different nigga. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, this ain't even. You used to be outside. So what do you got right. going on? This ain't on? even the other baby that is. I'm trying to. I'm trying to have I'm a girl. Fresh. Oh my and god. You still, and yeah, still I just, giving you boys. Still, still giving wow. boys. I, I don't know, but I, I was upset for like a second. I'm more so upset, not that I'm having a a boy. I don't, you know, I don't care. Yeah. It's still my babies. It's still yeah, my kids. Yeah, yeah. But it was just like, dang, I I threw a whole party. Yeah. Yeah. People flew from New York, drove up from New York. <laughs> we outside. We got balls. I got hired a caterer. We got a big old sign in the back. My my whole full yard back backyard full. Wow. So it'd be blue powder. How about that damn thing? thing. <laughs> For it to be baby blue. She could have sent me a text. Oh my God. Thanks, Diane. You could have sent me a text. I was really upset about that part more. Like, girl, you knew what I wanted. Yeah. So just say it's a boy. You could have just said, hey, sis, ain't maybe we don't want to do party. This. Yeah. We could have just, you know, send a little email out or something to everybody, a little group chat text. So, would you ever try this again for a girl? I, mm -mm. No I don't, more babies. No, my first one I had when I was 19. Okay. He's a, he's 13 years old now. Okay. Then I had one at 24 and then 26. Okay. This one at 32. Okay. 33. You wrapping it up. I'm tired. You wrapping it up. I'm tired. See, I'm 33. I didn't even got my first one. The first one's easy, though. It, you it is. The first one is easy. I mean, I was 19, but still, the first one is usually pretty easy, but I'm in my 30s. I can't I can't be having no more babies. I'm tired. So, look, I, everybody asks me, how many babies you want? How many kids you want? I'm like, like, how I see my life is this massive house with all these kids and my husband and just, it, I don't know if it's fairy tale. I don't know if it's a vision. I don't know what it is. But I say, I want eight kids. I want five kids. I want six. My friend said, have the first one. <laughs> now, when you tie them tubes after the first one, don't say nothing to me. If they let you. Right, right. They'd be real strict about that. But, but it I'm all like, depends. Okay, yeah. My first depends. one was, they said the first one was really easy. My first one was pretty easy. He was a real calm kid. Excuse me. He um slept throughout the night real early, like six weeks. Okay. Um, And after that, my, my CJ, he was pretty calm, too. He was real happy, ba okay. happy baby. And then Cameron, full-blown squirrel on crack. Okay. Like, he still is. Okay. And this one, he's pretty easy, too. It just it just depends on how much help you have. Okay. So okay. my first one I had, his grandma was here. She was a bit of help. Okay. More so, do what you want to do. Okay. My last, my other two middle ones, they I had their great-grandma helping me out. Okay. And then this so one I have his dad. And, but I got a, a nanny now, a babysitter. I'm hiring. Oh, you got money now. I'm hiring <laughs> help. I'm hiring because it's like, I'm, I'm not in New York, so I don't have that part yeah. of my family out here. And then... I can't, I don't like depending on people that you're yeah. not paying. And that's it too. Like when you're financially stable, you can have the help. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. I'm like, I want to have my babies and my family when I can't afford to travel with my whole exactly, family. Exactly, yeah. And have the nanny on the road or mm -hmm. have help on the road or homeschool the kids or it whatever. It makes it easy. I don't know why we, why I say we, because I feel like it's more black women than anybody that we feel like we have to do everything by on ourselves. Our own. Hire, baby, hire you a cleaner. Yes. Hire you a nanny. Yes. Hire you whatever you yes. need help with. I do not like cleaning. Yes. I don't. Me either. I'm gonna hire somebody. I'm gonna hire somebody. Instead of me sitting there letting my house get yes. filthy and filled up, I'm gonna hire somebody. They're not even that much. Yes. Honestly. They're honestly not that much. Don't don't kill yourself. We are mentally drained. Drained. Because we're trying to do everything. Because oh my grandma did it. She was in back crying. You even know she was in her room bawling Stressed, every night. Praying. Every night. For help. Every praying. night. Praying. Stressed. Wish she could have yeah. what you were able to get yourself now. And we have the convenience now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that you got bread and you got money. <laughs> Would you, it, okay, I'm going to just go back to this because I, I never say never. You might try this again. Would you have a baby but choose the gender? Or you feel like that need to be left up to God? That's 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 God. Okay. How, okay. Much, how much it costs first? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> how much it costs? I don't have a baby girl. What is, no, I feel like that's I, I'm almost, I feel like it's unnatural. Okay. I feel like, You're playing I feel like with science. I, and... I'm really big on everything happens for a reason. Okay. I know I say my, my upbringing was not good. When I go back and change it, I won't. No. Because it literally made me who I am today. It's your testimony. It really is. So I feel like you go through each part of your life for a reason. It okay. leads you up to the next part. Okay. So I really wouldn't change it. My four boys, I got four four princes that are going to be kings one day. I love and they don't that. play about their mama. They're going to call me, mama, where you at? I love that. I'm like, that. dang, I'm outside. I'm at, I'm at I work. They that. mama, where you at? What you doing? Let me see. My CJ, he would call me. Let me see the room. Who you with? Let me see though. 
sir, I you're a six. <laughs> you are my son, not my right. man. Swear. Okay. Uh-oh. Speaking of my Uh-oh. man, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it now. <laughs> we're going to get into it now because we were talking about this. The stigma on somebody that got three baby daddies, somebody doesn't look like you, isn't successful like you, isn't, this is not what the stigma would be on a black woman that has three different baby daddies or three different fathers to her children. I don't say baby daddies. There you go. Father to father my to children. Your children. Yep, you know, that has three different fathers to her children. So take us through that journey on how you got here and now with your loving boyfriend over here. He's like, he came over, he gave you water, you said, thank you, baby. I said, oh. <laughs> Just that little gesture. I love you, girl. (laughs) Here, supporting, just loving on you. You know, this is um, the father to your most recent son. Sebastian, yep. Um, Sebastian, I saw his picture. He is so freaking beautiful. Thank you. He's so beautiful. So take us through that. You are not what society would say a black woman with three different fathers to her children would look like. Would be, you're successful financially. It seems like you've healed from a lot um, spiritually. We're going to talk about that, how you healed through that trauma when you were younger. You pop it on social media. You have an impact on women and your following that look to you. A woman with three different fathers or children wouldn't look like that, technically, to the world. Technically That's to a the stigma. World. Yeah. yeah, and it's a bad one because, honestly, my first one, I was I got married. I was 18, okay. military life. Okay. You, when you military, y'all know. Yeah. 18, you married. Yeah. That's the thing you do. <laughs> is that because of the benefits? Benefits, definitely. Okay. And just... It's just it's, the it's tension. Like the first man said hi to me. Yeah, okay, let's get married. That's how it was. Wow. That's really how and I was married and then we had a kid. I was okay. married first and then we got moved in, and then we had a kid together. Okay. Come on. Um You said I was I married did, first. I did now. it right. You did it right. Quote unquote. I did it right. Okay. That didn't work out after a year. When well, my son seeing me crying, wiping my tears away a year, I'm like, I can't do this. I'm just I'm leaving. I'm not gonna stay in this just to say I've been married to my husband and we got a kid together. What wasn't right about it though? Oh, the cheating, the lying, everything. Man, I'm okay. not. I, okay. I was staying around for for okay. a little bit, but okay. then it's like, all right, it's becoming too much. My son is literally watching me cry. Jesus. He's gonna grow up to resent his father. Yeah, I'd rather us be apart and happy than together and miserable. I love that. So I left I him, agree with and that. I didn't have a kid for seven years. Okay, like I got my other, my ex fiance. Wow. So we were we were engaged to be married. Wow. We had two kids together, um, and then same thing. I'm not gonna stay here if we're not gonna be happy together. I'd rather be happy apart than miserable together. Who called the engagement off? Me. I did. I call everything off. That's me. <laughs> That's me. They I ain't going nowhere. They eat good. I, they, 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 I feel like sometimes men don't want to do that. They will do things to make you want to leave. Yeah. And make you do it to make you feel like a bad guy. I'm ready to go. Yeah. And I and I do it cordial. I don't do it nasty. I'm not resentful towards my my kids' fathers. Come get them. You yeah. want them? I don't. <laughs> I don't sure. give a Tuesday afternoon. Sure. I want to see him. Here you go. Come here, please. I'm not one of those that say, "Oh, you can't see your kid." I, I don't care about it. Come okay. get your kid. Come okay. be part of their life. Okay. Um, and then my last one, boyfriend. But I've known him longer than I've known any of them. Wow. I know him since I was 17 years wow. old, and you know we had our on and off parts where we weren't seeing each other for a while. He moved to Florida. Wow. You know, he was kind of just disconnected for a little yeah. bit, but we always came back together. Yeah. Um, and it was Sebastian. It was an accident, baby, but. Some lemon drops and lamb chops. <laughs> <laughs> Got the best of us, you know. So saying? how long have you and your boyfriend been together? Officially a year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. He asked me. If, he asked me to be his girlfriend a year ago. Oh, how did he do it? He did it at one of our favorite <laughs> restaurants. I love it. And he's one of the one of the realest ones to ask me that question because I haven't really been asked that question a lot. It's just assumed. Girl. Yeah. We, well, we, we, start, we know what we doing. Yep. The PS5 was in the living room. We go together. No, no, no. sir. That's not how it goes. That's, that's how my ex was. Um, uh, God rest his soul. He passed away a year ago, and I made. I was like, you have to ask me. So he did it the old school. He wrote it out. Will you be my uh girlfriend? Yes, no, maybe. It was the <laughs> cutest thing. That's cute. And I said, hell yeah. <laughs> that's how yeah. I was. I was like, I already am. Yeah. Like, he was like, I was like, stop being me. Yeah. But yeah, a restaurant we have at Virginia Beach. We we went there. Then the next day we flew to Miami for his birthday weekend. We turned up. All weekend, poppy steak, all that stuff. And celebrating. That's how. And celebrating. But now our our anniversary and his birthday next day. So now I'm like, Dang. all right, now I need money. <laughs> so a lot going on, but yeah, it was it was awesome, and I was pregnant a few months later. <laughs> <laughs> and then we back to square one. So now I'm at three kids' fathers. Okay. Um, like I said, I don't. My, my oldest is 13. I have a six year old who will be seven in two weeks. Yeah. And I have a five year old that's turned yeah. five. Um, I'm like, I tell their dads, come get them. Yeah. So which two have the same father? The two middle ones. Okay. So six, okay. Six year old and five year old. They okay. have the same dad. I had them the back to back. Okay. Yeah, I had them back to back. And he lives probably not that far from our house now. We went to move to Florida though. Okay. But he don't live that far from my house. 
every weekend he gets them. Go. Bye. Yeah. I see y'all when I see you. They'll, they'll FaceTime me on their little iPads. Hey, yeah. man, what you doing? Or, yeah. Could I have Robux? Yeah. You know, the usual. But yeah. it's, it's people, they ask that question a lot of me. Like, how many? Is she the same? Because. I guess I have a type, apparently. Yeah. They all look like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all my kids look alike, and he looks like, he can look like my kids fathers, yeah. honestly. Um, he look better than them. Yeah. But um, to my kids, he looked just like them. So I'm like, okay, they ask that question. I'm like, oh, you know, he's my boyfriend. Yeah. Like, I'm not married. Yeah. I'm not married to any guy I'll do a video with. Y'all swear up and down. They yeah. do videos, but yeah. I'm married no. to him. No, I'm not. Do you desire to be? I decided to be married okay. again. Yeah, I, I, the first time I was I was young, yeah. 18, 19. It, it didn't. It was I wasn't ready for that. You the prime example of try it again. I, I, well, You're the I prime try example of resilience. If I'm not, not happy, I'm leaving. Up. I love that. And I and I stayed with my my young my youngest two kids dad for like five years. Yeah, I did stay a while. Yeah, because I just kept being pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, let me stick it out. And you try, you try. And it's like, what are you trying for? Yeah. So when I let him. I was single for about two years. Yeah. As long as I've ever been single. Yeah. I started listening to Stefan Speaks on YouTube. I started reading books about yeah. like finding your health, like yeah. your woman's health and finding who you are happy by yeah. yourself. And I left him and it's no incident that my life just flourished. As soon as you let it go. As soon as you let go of the, all that negative, you just go up. Gone. And it's been going up. And with him, it's been going up even more. So that showed me right then and you there. You have the support. Yeah. So how, it, um, do you mind me asking what, what does he do? He's in the Navy. Okay, in the Navy. He's executive chef in the Navy. He cooks for admirals. Oh, yeah. you said, my man, baby, my man is good. He cooks, man. <laughs> so how is it, I wish I got to add, I'm like, so how is it dating, <laughs> how, for him, dating a woman that ha- is the face of the brand? Every, I'm sure when you go places, get me, get me, get me. <laughs> you just the celebrity of the family, you know, and um, I think it takes a very strong man to be able to support a woman and kind of step back sometime and let her shine, support you, like, that little gesture, that might be normal. That's your life every day. Mm-hmm. But when every I saw day. that, I'm like, he is here for her. He supports her. He loves her. He just brought her water, y'all, <laughs> off camera. She said, thank you, baby. You're welcome. You know, but he su- this is her moment. She's at an interview right now, and he is sitting back and supporting and loving her. And for me, in my experience, it's been very hard to find men that do that. It is. It is. Because a lot of men feel threatened of a successful woman. And I, and I don't know why, because it's like, I'm, we're going to grow together. Yes. Like, you have your path, yeah. I have my path. Yeah. And one, with him, like I said, he's been in the military as long as I was in the military. He's longer than me now. I yeah. got out. Um, And he's, well, he worked for big dogs. Yeah. Yeah. 06, 07, 08. He's so like, I'm that nigga he, too. Yeah. He, <laughs> he used to this, you know what I'm saying? So it's not, it's not hard for him. It took him a little bit to get used to like, okay, whenever we go outside, he a New Yorker. He from Harlem. Okay. Okay. He People ready. Run, coming he up. Ready. Like, who? Who? What? <laughs> oh, okay. I just said something. So Please he... don't shoot my face, man. Please. <laughs> she just want a selfie. So he got to get used to that part. Okay. Like today, somebody put my sunglasses on. It didn't, it didn't work. Yeah. It didn't work. Yeah. It didn't work at yeah. all. But one thing I love about it the most because I had three kids prior to him. Okay. And he was honest with me. Like it take, it's gonna take me a while to get used to it. He didn't try to just jump in and like yeah no he was honest like okay I, I've never been in a situation where I, people somebody had three kids wow that aren't mine wow. that I have to you know get used to and when I say my boys love, love that him. man love him. now my Cameron is the meanest one of all my kids he don't play yeah he don't like nobody yeah took his nanny six months to get used to him she, yeah he would not like her for six months yeah he loved him the minute he met him did you ever worry about that being single and you're like, I am a single black woman out here with three kids. Am I ever going to find love again? I always, always did. And especially when you people always worried you, about it. Yeah, yeah. People were always telling you, oh, you're never going to find no man. Yep. When you got three kids. Yep. Who? Yeah. <laughs> Who? Oh, okay. 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 You seen this kitchen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, it's like, we always had a bond. So it was always like a spark there. And all we did was light it. Okay. So all we did was light okay. it. And once we lit it, that was it. Water. That it. was it. Yeah. And it, it's amazing because it's nerve it's nerve wracking because people are single moms and they have two or three kids, or even one kid. Yeah. And it's men on podcasts like, oh, if you got a no. kid, you this, that, a no. third. No. Why? No, it's not true. Why? I want to say that to any woman out there. Your Vina says this all the time, my girl. Don't let your past paralyze you. Mm-hmm. Your past does not have to keep you stagnant. You see this woman right here? Flourishing, successful, three trying it again. <laughs> was getting up every time, walking out of situations and relationships that no longer served her. And you said, when I'm not happy, I leave. But she also said, 
she tried mm -hmm. in the relationship. First. She's not just giving up and walking away. Yes, in some relationships, you're not going to be happy in that season. Mm -hmm. You have to know when to walk away, when it's done, when that chapter is closed, when to walk away, or when God is telling you to stay for a season. That's your relationship with God. Yep. Go to him and he'll tell you. Yep. But like you said, no, we're not doing this. You're constantly cheating on me. You're co you had enough faith to walk out of a situation where you weren't being respected, you weren't being loved and honored as the woman you are, and you found somebody. Yep. Y'all, if if your husband is door number 20 <laughs> and you stuck on door number two, you'll never get to him. Never get to it. I am a firm believer in that. And I feel bad because I, I personally know women that are married. Miserable. Same, same five kids by that man, two kids by that man, same man, 10 years, and they are a single mom married in that relationship they're doing everything by themselves wow. like and that's wow. kind of how i was i'm like i'm doing everything by myself anyway why, why, why are you here with you why are you here? i'm paying all the bills i'm taking care of the kids by myself i'm doing everything and you just coming in the house and just being here i don't i don't have to have you and when you know a man is using you for that man when you leave them man. and now they're doing everything you've been complaining about for four or five years now you're doing it after i say i'm gone too late no once i'm done that's me i'm done when a I'm woman done. checks out you, you, you can start telling because we stop, we stop caring, and you start looking like, "Oh, you ugly!" <laughs> Don't touch me! <laughs> Don't How touch did me! I have sex with you, you it little gremlin. <laughs> I was it, brainwashed. It's sad because it's like you're so infatuated with the man, and then you're so happy, and then years go by. And it's like, where, where, where is that? Yeah, where is that? You're not making me happy anymore. I'm leaving. Yeah. Now you want to buy me flowers and do this no. for me and do. We're not doing it's that. It's too late because. I'm not the baby mama that's going to go back. Yeah. Don't worry about me, yeah. sis. You can have yep. all of them, yep. okay? <laughs> you can have, I'm never, yep. that's me. Once I leave, I'm never going back. Yeah. I'm never. Because I tried it. I gave it 100 chances for the kids. But they, my kids are so much more happier yeah. with me being with happy. being happy and present in the moment and having peace and happiness. Where do you live now? In Virginia. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In VA. So you went from New York to Virginia. Yep. Okay, cool. And you grew up in the Bronx. So tell me a little bit about the fact that people see, and I can relate to this so much, they see the success, they see the this, the be Simone, Kimmy, whatever, whatever. Just a healing that you you literally just told me your mama left you when you were six, six months old. Yep. Your aunt and your uncle raised you barely. Barely. <laughs> You you got out of school, still didn't know how you was going to get your next meal, and you are here today. Have you had to do a lot of work? Do you feel like you ignored the trauma? Do you feel like you brushed it under the rug and just keep pushing? Or do you feel like you have faced it head on? This is my truth. This is my story. I wasn't, because it was very hard for me to say certain things in my in, about my past. Or Actually, that was abuse. That person wasn't just mean. I actually was abused. Or that person wasn't just strict. Yep. I actually was abused. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? Like, to to vocalize that is actually very scary for me. And I'm I'm walking in my truth in this season. No, that person was wrong. No, because yep. you start to train your... No, maybe I was a bad kid. Yeah. Or maybe... Yep. I, no, that's the enemy trying to trick you into the truth. Yep. So do you feel like you have faced your truth in this season and it has helped you flourish and grow or do you feel like you still bury some of that trauma and just keep trucking i'm definitely a bury and keep trucking man i definitely am i've been told all through high school that i persevere in the face of adversity very well wow i was homeless my last year of high school my aunt we was living in like section eight housing in the bronx got kicked out i don't know how because the rent two dollars so mm. i don't know how you get out of a section eight housing in the bronx but middle of me and my 12th year of high school, like, I'm, I'm about to be done and know where to go. So I went to my best friend's house. And, you know, after a while, I was like, okay, we can't take care of you no more. Yeah. You're not, another mouth to feed. I got four mouths to feed already in the house. Wow. Then with my boyfriend, he lived with his mom, his dad, his brothers. We broke up a few months later. That was awkward at school. <laughs> <laughs> that was awkward like, at oh, school. We broke that up. So, that is not my man That's, no more. Right. And I was living with him. So now I'm my, sticking to my friend's house, sleeping on her bed, sleeping on her couch bounce back and forth in high school and I I talk about it a little bit but I don't I need I know I, I know I need therapy have you ever tried it? it I've tried a therapy a little bit a little bit here and there but not consistent not consistent, I need consistent enough to see that growth. like weekly I need yeah. a two days yeah. I can text you sis what's going yeah. on like that's what I need because I just I kind of bury it and then persevere wow. bury it and persevere and it's and it's hard because I try to speak on it because I know people that's going through it right now that needs to know that someone else went through it and came out of it. Mm -hmm. So I posted on Facebook that it's like 
it's nothing worse than when you're living with someone that you know don't want you don't want you there. And people were all in the comments. Yep, yo, oh, it hurt so bad. I'm like, people need to know that you went through it and you overcame it, so you can do it too. And right? You're not the only person. You're not the only one. So I'm it was, it was you hard. For acknowledging that. I didn't expect that answer. I I'm like, so me. what? You said no. I bury. <laughs> I, I'm I'm real good. Like I said, I cut people off. My aunt, I haven't spoke to her. And you just in like, act like it never happened. I spoke to my aunt like six years. Wow, the one that raised you. Yeah, and even even then, it was my nana's funeral. Like I talked to her for the funeral, barely at that. Like, all right, sis, don't be too close to me for the. Wow. But it's my funeral for my nana, so I'm gonna be there. Mm. Um, but I don't talk to her at all. She tried to add me on Facebook. Don't add her back. No, no. my uncle a little bit here and there. I tried calling my dad a few a few months ago. Uh, not really. It it was just I'm trying, but then. My thing is, I decide out of mind. If I don't see you, you don't exist. It doesn't trigger you. Yeah. But do you feel like you will get to that point of trying to tie in those loose ends and have that? Because sometimes I feel like, like you said, out of sight, out of mind. But if I see you and I'm still triggered, or if I, if something happens and I still, and it takes me back to that place of unforgiveness, of anger, I don't even want to feel that. Yeah. I want to be able to see somebody that hurt me and be like, I'm actually okay. And, and I'm still working through that. You know what I mean? Like, yep. I encourage you to work through that, sis, because your light is so bright now. Once you do that digging, oh, my God. I'm, I think I'm scared of it. I think I'm scared of one because I have ADHD. I was diagnosed with that a year ago, right before I was pregnant. I got diagnosed with that. And it's, it makes sense. I go back and think about it. I'm very forgetful. I forget so many things. Me but too. I also have very bad anxiety. When I mean bad anxiety, I mean I can, like, lose my phone for two seconds. Someone stole it. They took it. Um, um, my information on the internet. Like that's how my mind goes in a second. And my kid calls. I'm like, oh, he's about to go to the doctor's office. He's about to choke. I'm like, it, it just goes to like from zero to a thousand. Man, so quick. I can't sleep at night because my anxiety constantly going all the time. So I know I need to dive in because I feel like healing some from some of that past will calm my anxiety. Some getting to the root of it. Yeah, I have to. I know I have to. It's just. I find an excuse to like, oh, I'm busy. I gotta work. I gotta do this. I have to do this. I have to kids take care of. I don't have time. Mm. I know I do. If I make the time, you make time for what you want to do. But it's just like, I'm scared to what I'm going to like let out there. Like, I, 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 don't, I remember some things from my past, not all of it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I might start remembering more Digging stuff that's, wor that's worse than the stuff that I do remember. I remember yes. crying on the couch because I'm hungry. Yes. But I don't want to know what more happened. I, I remember my aunt saying things like, I should have never took you in. Like, Jeez, if, you, you, didn't, remember if that. you didn't want somebody's kid, why take them in? Man. Don't take them in and then resent them. Man. So I remember things like that and the more I think about it, I'm like, I bring up more memories. I'm like, I push it back my mind yeah. and I push through. Yeah. Because I got four kids. Yeah. I don't have, it's like, you can't have time to have your own pain when you have four kids you have to raise. Yeah. But if I'm angry, if I'm overwhelmed, I tell my kids, hey, mommy a little bit over some later right now. I need you to go Give sit me down. a second. Just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You, hey, my mommy, I'm like, just go sit down for a few minutes. Let me catch my breath. Let me catch, you know, my thoughts. And I come to you when I'm ready because it's too much. But see, that's already progress and working on it. You you at least have your tools in place because you know you have your anxiety. Your yep. And these things you're listing are the symptoms. I know. Once you yeah. get to that root, sis. And I, I'm, I'm over here. I'm talking to myself, too, because I'm, I'm still working on it. Yep. I was in therapy for a year. My therapist took a hiatus. She came back in March. I think I'm on her schedule for the first time in, I think, three months. Oh, wow. So I go back this month and I've done so much healing. Like like um, I was sharing with our previous guest, Crystal Renee. Um, I was like, I wrote my dad a letter, girl, just to, and I'm like, not going into your healing with expectations of what your aunt going to say. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. I for, no, this is for me. Okay. If y'all want to stay in the same place, and I'm not saying write her a letter. Yeah, yeah. That's not what I'm saying. But I think sometimes we go into healing expecting the other person to take accountability. Mm -hmm. or if y'all aren't ready to heal, that's not going to keep yeah. my healing stagnant. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move forward and I'm going to choose to heal for me. Whether you apologize, whether you take accountability, whether you admit the truth, I'm going to do all that for me. Man. And it's hard because it's, you think about it is you kind of expect people to be like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, would that sorry actually heal you? They could They could be lying. They could be lying. I got plenty of I'm sorry. Yeah. And they were lying. See, and I'm the opposite. I ain't got no, I, I maybe one, I'm sorry. I, most of the people that have hurt me don't take accountability. And that bothers me. That bothers me because my love language is words of affirmation. Oh, you, yeah. If you just be like, with sincerity, of course, a, 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 true, a, a, a true heart of repentance, you know what? What I did to you was fucked up. I was not in a right space. I, 
that is enough for me to have some type of relief. But I know mm. I can't wait on that. Yep. So I have to create my forgiveness and my peace and my healing on my own without waiting for a I'm sorry and a accountability. You know, so but that was affirmation. That's 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 why you it hurts you so bad. So See, bad. mine's acts of service. You, I need you to do something. Yeah, I need you to do something. So when I feel like people aren't like, I don't have, I don't like ask people to do stuff for me. You, yeah. you should, in my mind, read my mind. You should know what I want. <laughs> in my <laughs> mind, what did I just think? What did I just think? Yeah, what do, what do you think I need help with? Because yeah. I'm so used to carrying a burden. Even when I was a kid, changing my my uh, cousin's diapers and cleaning the house up and stuff like I never cooked like that when I was a kid. Yeah. Um. I, more so when I turned eighteen, I, I was like, cooking more and more for the house for my house. But when I was a kid, like get my aunt massages, clip her hotel nails, and like cr crazy stuff that I was always doing something for somebody else. So my love language acts of service. I want to do it for me now. Do something for do me. Do it for me. Like I, but I still have this thing where I'm, I have to touch everything and do everything. I'm like trying to sit back. Like you know what? You hired them yeah. to do it. Yeah. Let them do it. Yeah. Like and it and it's so hard because it's like acts of service. I I gave her so many acts of uh, acts of service when I was a kid that I just wish I had someone to do for it for you. me. And I do now, my man. He yeah, does. You love that man. Girl. I love that man. Like, like, I'm back saying, to my man. It's like I I. I don't really want an apology. I, I, not that I don't care. It's that, it's that I know she won't, which I'm sure she dealt with her own mental illness. 100%. It. I'm sure. Most 100%. Black, most it has black nothing women. to do with you. Yeah. yeah. I guess your, her anger outbursts. What happened know. to them when they were kids? Yeah, we don't know what yep. the stuff they, they carried they, and didn't heal from. And Because back then, going to the doctor was like forbidden. Like, oh, yeah. what's wrong with You're you? You're crazy. You're supposed to be, you know, supposed to be doing things by yourself. You're supposed to be strong. It's okay to need help. Yes. But back then that wasn't a thing. Yes. So now I'm I'm glad that we're able to have these tools to get counseling, even online. Yes. Just open the app and you got counseling That's services. It. Pills yeah. if you need it. Like everything yeah. right there on the yeah. app, you can get the help you need. Yeah. Podcasts, YouTube videos. Yeah. Stefan Speaks literally helped me so much watching wow. his YouTube videos. Wow. So much. Like two about two years ago. Yeah. Helped me so, so much. Reading books. Um, about like he uh, healthy healing and finding your journey and all that stuff. That and that's what people could do if they, if y'all not yep. ready for therapy for that big step, you know, and you don't have a community. Do you feel like you have mm -hmm. a community of friends and um family, or it's kind of just a, your I boys a and tight, a tight, a tight knit. knit? Yeah, they, okay. they're right now they're in Florida. One, one's in Atlanta, two is in Florida. Okay, they okay. Were, so real you have, tight your, you have yeah. your community, your yep. village, a few people, but um, that's great. Yep. Books, podcasts. There's so many outlets that mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I built this platform on, just resilience. Yep. Resilience. You are here because of resilience. You are here because you didn't let your circumstances define who you were going to be. Yep. You are here because, okay, I know what they say about welfare. I know what they say about food stamps. I know what they say about a black woman that has three kids, three different, I know what they say. Mm -hmm. That ain't got nothing to do with my success. That has nothing to do with where God has taken me, you know? So I'm so proud of you for that. I feel like he put me here to show them like okay you can do because i who, who i am on video is who i am in person yeah i don't do those gimmicks i don't yeah. do this yeah that's yeah. really how i am yeah. anybody that i'm cooking for yeah they see that happy healthy yeah. me you know i'm just dancing and playing and having fun and i'm gonna speak you know yes i'm gonna season it because yeah. why are you gonna ask yeah. you know i'm gonna put this <laughs> my season in my food yeah um and I, I i'm trying to bring out more of my personal side like there's so much of my story that people do not know and they'll be shocked to know shocked I'm shocked. shocked. Right? I'm shocked sitting here to know. like this is a real interview for me. It's not like I looked up, you, looked you up, yeah. yeah, Google and yeah, Wikipedia. Yeah. I just like <laughs> tell me who you are. I'm shocked. I have no it's, idea. It's hard. I look at my yearbook. I see all my teachers. Like my last year, my teachers, my vice principal, like four teachers paid for my prom. My senior, they because I didn't have no money, but they wanted wow. me to go so bad. They all pitched in money, senior trip, prom, dress, heels, makeup hair nails everything my first time I get my nails done I was 17 years old were you ever a ashamed or did you kind of walk in your truth as a kid um or were you like you know or were you like no I don't got it look I don't got it okay good I was a good teen so not having a perm um not having my head not just like a boy all the time I thought I was kind of forced into the tomboy ish yeah. because I was getting my brother's leftover clothes yeah like whatever he had I got it yeah um I never really had any kind of girly clothes no new stuff I was wow. never on trend ever on trend um, and I'm still finding my feminine side yeah. because I was forced to be so masculine yeah. and forced to do it for myself. Yeah. I'm still trying to find that side at 33 years old. Yeah. Well, for, for four boys, yeah. I'm still trying to find where I'm right and, now? Yeah. It's your Jesus year, sis. Ooh, uh, when your birthday? Uh, October. Ooh, yeah. Girl, <laughs> you going to be. I'm ready. I'm claiming. I'm claiming. I healing. turned 30 and everything just went up. That's it. Turned 30, everything went up. I, I put my all to my videos. 
I didn't know it would take me to where I am now. Yeah. I was trying to make a little buck. Yeah. I was trying to get a little yeah. coin for YouTube. Yeah. You know, I was military, so I was getting benefits yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. And it's so scary, like, getting out the military with you don't, like, have nothing set. Like, where am I going? Yeah, What's like, they, they make, they kind of put that fear in you, like, when you get out, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Like, dang, can Give I just find something? <laughs> like, <laughs> child. So when I got out, I was already doing this for about two years. And okay. It was doing pretty good. So okay. I just put my all into it. And I'm like, <laughs> thank God it paid off because I got yeah. three miles at the time. Now yeah. four. So it's it's scary. But my my story, I tell a little bit on Facebook sometimes. I got yeah. a personal page. Yeah. I post a little bit here yeah. and there. Little speckles, yeah. you know, because... Once people notice about you, I know. Like you said, it's out there. It's out there. And they have opinions. But one thing about me, I would not read a comment. Really? I try I try my hardest not to read negative comments. When I do, I don't respond to no negative comments. You just delete them. I don't delete them. You, you don't. Get up there. My followers don't play. They go in. Say some smart if you want to. Oh, they go in. The ones I that have been riding down with me from the beginning, that seen my humble beginnings. Yes. Because my food didn't always look like. Yeah. Instagram, yeah. TikTok, presentable. Yeah. It was good as hell. Yeah. It just wasn't like how the, some of the yeah. you know, micro greens and all this. It was real right. And that <laughs> goes back to like people that want to be influencers, that want to start something. You do not have to have it all together at you the know. beginning. The, oh, I, I need mics. I need that. No. Start the podcast, sis. Start it. Start it. Start it. Start the podcast. I, I, I don't have the right. Start the cooking channel. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to talk, talk about. Tell your story. Yep. You that start start somewhere. You know what I mean. And like you um you were saying when you grew up, um you you just walked in it. I love that you said that because I was the same way with my journey. I was pulling up in my little Toyota with three hubcaps. <laughs> it's still on YouTube. You scroll down my Instagram. That hub, that Toyota with me and Desi in there. That was my car. And I would be pulling up to red carpet events, VIP, valet in it, girl. Like, oh, well. I had the nerve to valet. <laughs> My homegirl be like, right. I said, look, <laughs> now give me a minute. This is what I got right now. Mm -hmm. But the more you walk in your truth, nobody can use us nothing against you. Mm -hmm. Oh, be Simone Toyota got three hubcaps. I already said that. I already posted right. that. You ain't saying nothing about me that I haven't already walked in. Just owning who you are in that season. And that's what I heard from your story. I ain't got it right now. Mm -hmm. I'm a habit. But I ain't got it right now. I'm and I didn't know how I was going to get it either. I Like, I never had a plan to be famous, to be rich. I never had a plan. I just had a plan to, to make be sure okay. I, 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 was, I was good. And then once I had the kids, I'm like, all right, make sure that they're good. So once the more kids I had, the more I was like, all right, I make sure that they, they are good. I'm good now. Mm -hmm. Now I got to make sure that Christmas is good. Yeah. I'm big on holidays. Yeah. Like, super big. Like, yeah. I'm going Easter baskets. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. That's how they get my boys. They get yeah. gifts. Baby, baby boy got a gift. Yeah. That's how they, he two weeks old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't play like I made sure because I, I people's like, oh, material things mean nothing. When you're a 10 year old man and you go to the Christmas tree, there's nothing under there for you. Man. That hurts. It means something at the end. It, it, it yeah. sticks in your mind. Yeah. When you're that kid that has all your holes friends. in their shoes in school and people make it funny because of it. Yes, material things mean something. Yeah. When, when you don't have, I think one year everybody's wearing like I love New York t shirts. It was yeah. a big trend. Yeah. It cost like ten bucks, maybe five bucks. And when you didn't when you're the only kid in school that didn't have that shirt, you feel left out. You feel left out. And it's like, first of all, the kids teasing me, you ain't got no job. It's your <laughs> it's your mama money. It's your mama. She's the one with the job. That's not even your money. So why are you teasing me? Because I my aunt don't have no money. Yeah. Like why well, am I gonna yeah. get tease yeah. her? Tease her. <laughs> tease my broke ass aunt. Tease her. You know I'm what the saying? kid. Right. So it's like I make sure that my kids have that plus me. I'm proud of you. Mentally ready for them I'm for the day because baby, them boys, they'll get you. Sit down. I'm trying to do that yeah. no more. I'm trying to yell. Yeah. Gentle parenting. Yeah. yeah Gentle yeah. parenting. But it's like to have to not have material things as a kid. It messed me up, but I just pushed through it. I got teased. I got I've been getting teased since I was like six years old. Mm. From six to high school. In the high mm. school, I did a project my last year, an English class. It was like a family tree and it had question marks all over it. And I told my story to my class. Like my story. Wow. And at, at the time that was my story. I, my story done grew since then. Wow. Um, I told them everything. And my teachers are back crying. And it was like, well, we didn't know. Like you, you teasing people because you, you don't know. My. You don't know what these kids are going through at home. I tell my kids all the time. You see a kid in school, if they hungry, give them some of your food. Yeah. Yeah. If I give you money to buy you a snack, I buy them a snack too. Wow. I don't play that. Wow. I don't play that. I could easily be the opposite, but I'm, I'm not. How do you feel like your relationship with God 
um, or tell me about your relationship with God. Do you feel like it's helped you through this time? Are you spiritual? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in, what do you believe? I did when I was a kid and I lost it for a little bit. Wow. And then I was on deployment and for like nine months. Um, when went, you say lost it, lost your belief. Lost my belief. Because the way I grew up, I was like, he's, he can't be real. Wow. Why would you put me through all of this? He can't be real. And I, I started like trying to make it scientific like oh you know this this doesn't make no sense and then, mm -hmm. and then i was like i lost it for a bit then mm -hmm. i read his book on deployment in 2013 called the vow mm -hmm. so i didn't watch the movie i read the book okay the book by the actual people that that went through it and it restored all my faith wow it wasn't the bible it was, it was th that book about their faith and god that restored my faith wow on deployment and since then he's been part of my life and you believe in it yep so you believe now? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we, I love that man. All right. <laughs> big one, big guy. She said, well, I lost my faith. Well, did you find it? Definitely did. Definitely did. Oh, well, I'm going to speak life into you anyway. Says, girl, he got his hand all over you. He, he Your do. spirit, your energy, your... I feel it through the phone. He has had you since you was, what, six months? Before you were six months. <laughs> right. Before you was in your mama's womb. He pushed me through all of that. And I always say, he put me through that for a reason. Yes, so but, when I get to this point, I can, I can appreciate everything I have. I can understand it and I can use my past to make sure that like people out there, one thing about me, I'm a tip. Yeah. If you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. If you I'm I, I don't go nowhere saying I'm Kimmy. Yeah. I'm sitting with my back to the door. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Kind of yeah. hiding my face, yeah. sunglasses on. I try to, you know, just trying to eat. Yeah. But if you, I'm a tip. Yeah. And then I have people coming to me and hug me. Yeah. Afterwards, thank me, like all oh, tell me, like, oh my God, yeah. you know my day. Like just yeah. little things like that that People don't because I don't record it. Yeah. I just do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I do that a lot. So I'm using everything he's given me now to give back in my own way. Yeah. People think giving back is giving to charities For sure. and For going sure. to events. For and sure. Sometimes it's the little things. Pay somebody, uh, somebody's coffee at a Starbucks. Yeah. In the or morning. Maybe, what you doing for the community? Baby, I take care of my family. Yeah. Give me a second. Right, I can't right. save the world. I can't, I but can I'm going to help. I have to change my world around me, mm -hmm. you know. So I encourage you, sis. Thank I'm you. I'm so proud of you. I love you. I thank you for coming here and sharing more of your story, things that I had no idea. I'm sure the viewers had no idea. Dear God got his hand on you. He do. And I'm speaking life into you that you are going to dig deeper and you're going to do your healing. I am. You I'm already on the, you I'm going to book it. Book it. I'm going <laughs> to text it. you and check on you. I'm going to book it. Because it's going to unveil and unwrap and the layers come off and it's still, it's painful. Yep. It's painful. It's not easy. But what, you already a light. You get more of that darkness, those layers off and you get to that root. Oh my God. It's going to be a next elevation. You already elevated. He's already exalted you. Right. So Definitely. I'm excited to see your next journey. And I'm going to text you. I'm going to check in. I'm going to do it. I'm going to book the appointment. Send me that appointment. <laughs> I wanna I'm going to forget for yeah. I'm going to book it, though. I love you. I Thank love you, you for too. coming. And of course. Um, I feel like we could talk. I, I, I want to ask so many more questions. I'm like, well, where was your auntie? Where was your daddy at? Where was the uncle? Well, where was the, you know, uh, where the baby dad is? Where the fathers of the kids? You know. But um, I'm a, we could bring you back. We could Definitely. talk, go live, whatever we need to do. But Definitely. I just want to um connect with you more. I wanted to bring you on. I was like, come on. She was like, for real? I was like, girl. I said, stop playing. Don't you? be like, I was high. You <laughs> trying to be here. Because <laughs> my, my friends that's close to me know 10 years. Yeah. Rocking with you. Since yeah. you was in the car, yeah. a crying, laughing at the same time. I've been rocking thank with you. you. Since then, you. always you. supporting you with every endeavor you've ever been on. Been following you forever, so I'm Thank like, you. when you first start following, like, she be small following me, y'all. <laughs> she follow because when people follow me, it's like when you first start social media, sure. you don't really know. Like you just Instagram was have like 10k. I'm just yeah. like, all right, 100k. I'm like, okay, hold on, 200k. Hold, hold, hold on, million. right? Oh, I'm like, hold on, I'm starting to get up there now. Yeah. So I was like, all right, people start following me. I'm like, okay, so and so follow me, a celebrity. I'm like, all right, cool. So and so a celebrity. Okay, cool. Be small, be small, follow me, y'all. I was cutting up, okay, uh, and then when. Uh, um, what was that? I think when you responded back to a video, and then when I saw you a funny bone, yeah. my homegirl Fine, hey Fine, you mad? <laughs> uh, <laughs> when she saw that, I said I'm going to. I said you lying, you lying. I'm like yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh my god, you you been loving her forever. I'm like yeah, wow. I know. Well, you came to the funny bone about two years ago. Wow. I took a picture with you. I got to wow. find it on my phone, bro. Find it and send it to I, me. I think I hit two million, two million on TikTok. Wow. So I was doing a two million photo shoot with my little orange hair. Yeah. And you, your hair was just like that. What? I'm not, so I'm gonna find that picture. So it must have been the first time I cut my hair. Wow. I'm gonna find that picture. Your hair was just, and then I sat like kind of in the front middle. Wow. And I was sitting in the back and she was like switching me. I don't want to sit right here. I was like, okay. So I switched and then you came out and you started dancing in front of me. And I, she was so mad. She was hurt. She was like, 
I can even say that. <laughs> wow. But yeah, I've been, yeah, so she, she's hype. So I'm like, social media could take you somewhere and, yeah. and like link yeah. you with people that you never yeah. thought. Like yeah. I have some people that DM me and message me that I, you know, talk to on a regular basis. I'm like, hey, even proteges, like, hey, yeah. I'm happy you do this, yeah. happy you do that. And watch them grow on never social thought. media. If you're genuine, if you're aligned with your purpose, honestly, it's gonna come That's naturally. It. You don't have to do no gimmicks. Be you ain't gotta you ain't gotta self. be mad, mad with the twerking. <laughs> Baby, she okay. can do that. She can do that. Everybody can nah, do these that. These cheeks can't do that. <laughs> these cheeks These flapjacks can't do that, but I'm saying you don't have to do but the even gimmicks. Her, be, you don't, just be yourself. That's who she is in this season. That's who be she yourself. is. Yeah. Like, be yourself. She's being herself. She's not forcing it or nothing. Yeah. Like, people are forcing so much to get views, yeah. to get likes, to yeah. get followers. It's like, it's going to come natural. The views, the likes, and the followers are going to come when you are yourself and the community that attaches itself to you will be able to relate to you and yep. your story. That's why me and you are here. Yep. Because definitely. we were ourselves and we put it out organically. Before we go, sis, I'm going to ask you. What is something in this world that you would try again? Try again. Anything. We already know you tried love again. You tried motherhood again. You tried relationships again. You tried, what's something that you would try again? Maybe something you failed at. Maybe something hmm. you want to try. Maybe something, it could be anything. Try again. Um, That's hard. Like I said, I feel like everything I do is for a reason. It's for a purpose. Um. Uh, Try again. I said I said the military in a different way. Really? So I, when I joined the military, I joined quick. I said this is get me out of this get me out of New York. I don't care okay. how I could have joined as an officer. Okay. Uh, and I I, I kind of wanted to get into that world. I was trying to apply for that world okay. a little bit. I wanted to try that part because okay. to me it's a different side. Okay. Enlisted officer is two different sides of the military. So I wanted to try that. So I I'll probably try that like try to do that part of my life. Try again in the beginning when I joined the Navy. Like, all right, let me go ahead and apply for the officer program. Okay. And see where it takes me. And do me. it a different way. Yeah, do it a different way. I'm yep. going to give you another one. Uh -huh. Trying therapy again. Definitely trying therapy. You're doing it again. <laughs> I had a good therapist the first time I had it. We did three sessions. And then she was military. And I think I kind of like lost her in the sauce. And then I had another one. She wasn't good. Yeah. Another one. She wasn't good. Yeah. You know, you got to find that person. You got to find person. one for you. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to try yeah. again. Are you try again. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try again. I love you, sis. I love you, too. Oh, okay. What's something you would never try again? These kids. Okay, look. Nah, not really. I'm not trying. On purpose. On purpose. <laughs> okay. I'm not trying. Uh, to get another girl, uh, get, to get a girl. Ano a girl. I'm not trying to, trying to, trying to have girl. another baby. I'm not. Okay. This is God said you're gonna be a boy mom. That's it. That's your. That's do your it life again purpose. if you want to. <laughs> have a fifth boy. It had twin boys. Okay. It'd be mad. I will. I'd be mad. I'd be mad. So I'm gonna just leave it alone. I'm gonna have my four boys. I'm trying to raise okay. four kings. Okay. okay. Maybe he need me to, you know, show him how to how a woman's a woman is in their life yeah. and have a man in their life that treat them, you know, yeah. have that path to show yeah. them how to really You're calling to raise really these be. Yeah. Some of these men out here. Yeah. They ain't, they ain't living right. They ain't, <laughs> they ain't right. living right. So before we go, is there anything you want to promote? Um, anything? I know you have your cookbook. Yep. Yeah. I have two. I have an I buy cookbook. I'm going to say it right. I buy cookbook. <laughs> well, y'all get in the comments well, and tell me. Right, up. They be like, say it right. Yeah. yeah. I got that cookbook. Um, I also have my 40 40 cookbook with uh, One Stop Chop and Mr. Make It Happen. Um, I have two seasonings. Okay. Yes, that much seasoning. Yes, that much seasoning. Garlic and herb. It's a garlic butter and herb seasoning. Okay. Fire. Okay. On everything. Okay. Okay. And okay. I got my hot honey seasoning as well. Okay. So I had those two. That's, I'm not really, I just had a baby. I'm still on maternity leave. Okay. Kind of, sort of. I'm doing videos here and there to kind of get back to the okay. video filming, but I'm not really doing no tours or nothing crazy this year. It's coming. I'm keeping. <laughs> they want to see you on that road now. They want to meet you. They want to hug you. They want to. If coming. I did I do it, it's going to be more so in a teaching aspect than okay. they, I'm not I'm, I'm not big on catering and cooking I for big that. crowds yeah 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 yeah. I want to teach like yeah. I want to show you how to go back home and make this not just eat for one day okay and then that's it I okay go back home and make it for your family I love that yeah. okay thank you for sharing that of course they have I a good life you. thank you for coming <laughs> of course oh Kimmy you guys virtual claps and snaps for her thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode of Let's try this again. Podcast. I'm your host, B. Simone, and I will see you next week. The YouTube drops every Tuesday. The audio drops every Monday, everywhere you get your podcast. I love you guys. Bye. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Let's Try This Again podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and share the podcast. Until next time, stay resilient. And remember, I love you guys. So much.